Important terminology, capital budgeting process. We're looking at two types of projects here. The first is independent and the second is mutually exclusive. Right, so we're looking at an independent project. Cash flows are unrelated and they're independent of one another. Okay, so independence, is it important to be independent? Yes. Why? Because you can't live relying on everyone all the time. Okay, so if you've got an independent project, what would an independent project be? Um, well, they don't projects that don't rely on your attention all the time, I guess. Um, okay, almost. They're, they're totally separate. So one project doesn't affect the other. So, for example, let's use let's use your example that you mentioned earlier. Buying a tablet. Okay, buying a tablet would be considered an independent project. So the project would be buying. And, um, a tablet. Another project yeah. could be um, the job that you mentioned. Okay, so starting a new job. Okay, so those are two separate projects. The one is referring to the tablet being purchased and the other is referring to the, the job. Are they independent and unrelated? Yes. Yes. So buying the tablet isn't going to affect the job opportunity or taking or not taking the job isn't going to affect the decision to buy or not buy the tablet. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, so when look at independent projects, the one does not eliminate the other. Okay, okay, so can I accept more than one project? Can I accept A and B if they're independent? Yes. Yes, I can. Because you could have you could have bought the new tablet and you could have taken the new job as well. Okay, both you could have taken. Do you agree? Yes. All right, because they're independent. The one doesn't eliminate the other. Yes. All right, so now we've got mutually exclusive projects. A project, projects compete with one another for acceptance and approval. Okay, so here I'm going to use tablet. Yes. And I'm going to use laptop. Okay. okay. So those are two projects that would be mutually exclusive because you told me when we had the demonstration, you said your laptop was a bit old and you had, to, you had to buy something new. So you probably would have decided to either go with the tablet or you could have gone with the laptop. Either or would have been an option. Do you agree? Yes. Do you agree you don't need both? Yes. Okay. The tablet can do everything a laptop can do. The laptop can do everything the tablet can do. So it's either or. Okay, so in that scenario, you would be looking at that as being a mutually exclusive project. Because if I go with the tablet, then I eliminate the laptop. Yes. Okay, the one eliminates the other. That's a mutually yes. exclusive project, meaning I have to choose one or the other. So it's either A or B. So if I choose A, I can't choose B. Do you agree? Yes. Okay, so that's it's it's like it's also like time. Time is mutually exclusive because you can only do one thing at a time. Okay, you can yeah. either um, I don't know uh, watch a movie or go to the gym. Okay, you can't do both. You can't go to the gym. Or actually, you could. Um, you could actually you could gym and watch a movie. That could be possible. But okay, that's not a good example. So um, let me think of another. Okay, working and studying. You can't do both. Okay, you can't work and study at the same time. Yeah. All right. You, you have to choose between studying or working at a particular point in time. Okay, whether you study yeah. part-time or full-time, that's irrelevant. But I'm just looking at time. You can't do more than one thing at a specific point in time. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right, so if I'm looking at the process, we spoke about this earlier. We've got a note about capital ration. What does the word ration mean? You've probably heard it before. Um, I don't know. Okay, capital rationing looks at allocating <coughs> funds that are limited. Okay. Okay, so when I have limited resources, I need to allocate, I need to budget. Are funds okay. unlimited? No. No, they're not. So what do I then do when budgeting for certain projects? 
Well, there needs to be an accept or reject approach in terms of minimum requirements. Okay, so this would be almost like your standards. Okay, so think of like accounting standards or even standards in terms of technology. Okay, so um, earlier you told me about a phone, okay, a cell phone, smartphone, mobile phone. Okay, so let's look at that, a mobile phone. In terms of your accept and reject approach, what are the minimum requirements for a mobile phone? Well, internet access, taking mouse pictures, WhatsApp, Instagram. Okay, good. So, do you agree, in terms of a minimum requirement, would you buy a phone that doesn't have a colored screen? No. No. Would you buy a phone that doesn't have a camera? No. No. Would you buy a phone that can't connect to the internet? No. No. And those phones used to exist, and now they don't. Why? Because the minimum requirements are in place, meaning there's an accept and reject approach. So we will not accept a mobile phone that doesn't meet certain requirements. Yes. Okay. The same thing applies to projects. Projects have certain minimum requirements. Can we look at what those are in other examples later on? Okay. Then, once you've got all the mobile phones, okay, so um, you get different makes and models of mobile phones. Can you give me some examples? iPhone, Samsung, LG. What else? Um, Gee, I don't even know. <laughs> Nokia. Okay. All right, so do you agree? Those are all different manufacturers. Okay, Apple, Samsung, LG, Nokia. Okay, so if I'm looking at those minimum standards, okay, mm -hmm. do you agree all those phone manufacturers create cell phones that meet our minimum requirements. So they all connect to the internet. They all have cameras. They all have a screen. They all have colored um, pictures and, and a good camera and all of that. Okay, so they meet the minimum requirements. All right, now what do we do with those mobile providers? We rank them. Do you agree? Yes. Okay, and that's the next approach. Now it's the ranking. So once you know that the minimum requirements have been met, now I need to rank them in terms of best to worst. So out of these four, which is number one? Samsung. Okay, two. iPhone. Three. LG. And then Nokia would be last. Okay, so see, what you've done is you've ranked those mobile phones. So when looking at finance, we're going to do the exact same thing, but for projects. We'll have project A, B, C, D, and we'll rank them in terms of which is the best and which is the worst. And which projects do we choose? The best or the worst? Best. Exactly, we choose the best. Okay, so your tablet and mobile phone is probably a Samsung. Why? Because your view in terms of your minimum requirements, so tablet, smartphone, whatever the case might be, okay, Samsung meets your minimum requirements. And then in terms of your ranking, you believe Samsung to be the best, and that's why you chose it. All right, and that's what companies do, but yes. they do it on a more, um, let's say, holistic view because they're looking at projects, they're looking at products, they're looking at services, they're looking at um, campaigns, perhaps, in terms of marketing. So there's such a lot of different applications that could be applied here, but the basic principles are the same. You take limited resources in terms of capital rationing, and you take them and you budget for certain projects to be accepted and implemented. Okay. Right, now we've got a note about cash flows. You get two types. You get conventional and you get non-conventional cash flow patterns. Initial outflow followed by a series of inflows. So what would that cash flow look like? Well, let's draw a timeline. I'll have the start. And I'll have the end. Okay, if there's an initial outflow followed by a series of inflows, okay, is the outflow positive or negative? Negative. Correct. And a series of inflows, so they would all be 
Positive. Yes. Okay. That's conventional cash flow. Okay, so initial outflow mm -hmm. followed by a series of inflows is what form of cash flow? Uh, conventional. Conventional. Right, then we have an initial outflow followed by a series of inflows and outflows. What do you think that's going to be? Um, non-conventional. Non-conventional. Okay, so here we'll have plus, then minus, plus, then minus, plus, plus. Okay, so so long as I have those, I have an initial outflow followed by a series of inflows and outflows. That's non-conventional cash flow. Happy? Okay. Yes. All right. So let's see if you remember how to interpret cash flow in terms of positive and negative, non-conventional, unconventional. Okay, so if I look at the series of cash flow, non-conventional or conventional? Well, this specific one, there's not an, it doesn't start with an outflow, but Correct. there's... So non-conventional. Because it's, yeah. it's it's not it's not consistent with the initial outflow being an amount. So if I wanted this to be non-conventional in its true sense, I would have to have initial outflow followed by another outflow at some point in time. Okay, right. What does net present value stand for? What it is today. Correct. Okay, today's worth. In its simple terms okay so net present value is you're taking everything in the future I'm taking this amount I'm taking that amount I'm taking all these amounts and I'm discounting them back in time okay if net present value is positive or equal to zero I was achieved and there was bonus the only time where we reject is if I um, not I is if net present value is less than zero if NPV is less than zero, I am not going to accept the project. Because am I creating value? No. No. So value is only created if NPV is greater than naught. Okay. Or the I is achieved if the net present value is equal to naught. Okay. IRR we've seen before as well in terms of internal rate of return. Okay. It's just the rate. We'll, we'll look at all these calculations in more detail later. If I'm looking at IRR, it's the rate that's applicable to the cash flow. Right, so the I is the amount that I have over the period of time. Okay, so from start to finish, what rate do I actually get? Okay. Right, first bit of calculation. Relevant cash flows. If something is relevant, is it going to affect the decision making? Yes. Yes. Okay, so cash flows can be relevant or irrelevant. If they're relevant, they're part of the decision-making process, and I then need to calculate those amounts. So there are three calculations that you need to take away from this week. The first being initial investment, the second, OCF, and the third, TCF. Okay, operating cash flow, terminal cash flow, and all three of these are done on a separate calculation. Okay. First bit we need to discuss is the decision to replace. We spoke about motives for investing into capital, expansion versus replacement or renewal. So replacement and renewal is looking at this, okay? Relevant cash flow that will affect the decision making, okay? Currently, because what I decide to do now will affect what will happen in the future. Okay. Right, so if I'm looking at the decision to replace, I'm going to have to look at the initial investment, I'm going to have to look at the OCF, and I'm going to have to look at the TCF. Are those calculations separate? Yes. Yes. There are, there are three separate calculations. For each one, you need to look at the new, and you need to look at the old. And if I subtract new from old, I then get the initial investment. Is that right? Yes. Okay. And you do the same thing for OCF. New minus old. And TCF, new minus old. Right, so that's what I do when I have a replacement decision. So replacing an asset, is the old asset relevant? Okay. 
is the old acid relevant if I replace? No. It is. Yes. And because it's a replacement yes. decision. Can you still use the old acid? Yes. No, you can't. If you're replacing the old acid, you're replacing it. No, but before you make the decision, you either choose are you going to keep on using the old one or are you going to replace it? Okay, see, that's good. Okay, because that's that's relevant for the decision-making today. So that's good. So what you said there in terms of I either decide to keep it or not, do you see that the old acid has relevant to the new acid? Do you agree? Yes. Okay, so am I going to analyze the old and the new? Yes. Correct. Okay, and that's what we're going to be doing for a replacement decision. Okay. What happens if I have expansion? Is the old relevant? No. No, it isn't. Why isn't the old relevant? Because mm, you're not going to be using it anymore. No, no, not quite. Okay, because if you look at expansion, you're buying new, so the old acid doesn't affect the decision to expand. Okay. Do you agree? Okay, so okay. expansion is buying more of something, purely for the purposes of buying more of it. Okay. Replacement is buying something to replace something else. So does the old acid have relevance for that decision making? For replacement, yes. Yes, for replacement, definitely correct. Okay, so with expansion, expansion decisions will always have zero for the old assets. Okay, so do we like expansion decisions? Yes, because if I go back here, this will be a zero, this will be a zero, this will be a zero. So with expansion, all I look at is the new. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So with expansion, expansion decisions are easier to calculate than replacement decisions. Replacement decisions are more, um, more difficult to calculate because you need to go through more of the steps. Because if I have replacement, I need to look at all of this. Is that alright? Did that make sense? Right, you're breaking up. Is that alright? Did that make sense? No, sorry, you were breaking up a bit. Oh, okay, so let's just re repeat that then. Okay, so the decision to replace is key. Why? Because the old asset has relevance for the decision making. So if I'm going okay. to be replacing an asset, I'm going to have to look at all of those calculations. I'm going to have to do a calculation for all of those cash flows. Up again. Okay. It's right up. All right. Tandra, are you still there? Can yes, but me? it's breaking up. Seriously? Yes. Okay, that's strange. Okay. Yeah, um, the connection right. looks fine oh. on my side. Let me just check the... Yeah, it looks fine. I've still got full connection. Okay, so not too sure what that break was. Don't don't stress. Um, um, is everything okay now? Yes. Okay, good. So when I look at a replacement decision, I'm focusing on what? New and old. So I need to look at the calculation for both. Okay. Okay. Right, what is and a sunk expansion cost? Expansion is only new. Expansion, yes. I only look at the new because the old has zero value. Okay. Good. Okay, what is a sunk cost? I don't know. Okay, the definition is here. Cash outlays are already made and therefore have no effect on the cash flow relevant to the current decision. So, if something is sunk, Think about a hole, mm -hmm. okay? And if you throw something into the hole, and the hole is very, very deep, yes. okay, are you going to be able to get that back? No. No. Okay, so a sunk cost 
is when you make a decision. So when you make a decision, you've got to live with the consequences. Okay. Okay, that's basically what we're looking at. So a sunk cost is once you've made a decision, once you've done something, there's no way of going back. Okay, okay. live with it, move on. That's the sunk cost that you have to to bear with in terms of the actual business. So the business has a sunk cost that you can't get back. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So is a sunk cost included in the decision making? Yes. No. Why would you include that in the decision making? Because uh, you can't change it. You can't undo the past. Okay. okay. So companies need to be forward looking. Companies need to look at how do I achieve the goal? Not how do I worry about what happened in the past? Okay. Does that make sense? Okay. Okay. So in terms of the finance, the financial managers use the term a sunk cost when they refer to things that have happened that we can't do anything about. Okay. All right. And opportunity costs is relevant. Why? Because... Think of the word opportunity. You can still do something about it or choose between two different stuff. Perfect. Okay. That's exactly right in terms of what, what an opportunity cost is. And an opportunity cost is you have choice. You choose what you want to do. Do I go with A or do I go with B? You still have choice. Once you've made that choice, well, then you need to live with the consequences because now it becomes a sunk cost. Opportunity costs are current, um, how can I put it? A, a current, let's say a current factor that will change the decision making for a particular company. Okay, so a company will have an opportunity cost of replacing versus expanding okay because think about it if i'm going to be replacing a machine if i replace the machine the opportunity cost would have been what what have i lost out on the other of not using the asset correct okay so an opportunity cost is if i choose one item over another i've lost i've lost something basically Okay, mm -hmm. so in um, you do a lot of economics, so you, you probably know opportunity costs quite well. Uh, they talk about like marginal utility and all of those types of considerations. So an opportunity yes. cost would be what I lose out on. It's, the, it's what I forego. Yes. yes. 